Cecilia Mandaini, and she's from the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro, and she's going to speak on statistical solutions from an abstract view, viewpoint. So, um, good afternoon. Um, just to say this is joint work with Annie Bronze and Ricardo Rosa. Both of them are here. Um, so, just a little bit of motivation for this work. Suppose you have an evolution equation of this form. So u dt equals to some function f depending on t and u of t, and it, which is associated to the phase, to a phase space x. And um, so suppose you have an initial set, uh, a condition, um, I'm sorry, a um, set of initial conditions which are distributed according to um, probability measures mean naught. And um, you, want to, you want to know how this, how this set is going to be after a certain time t. What is, what is the evolution of this set? And, and with, uh, according to which measure this, set, this uh, solutions after a certain time t uh, are distributed. So, so the question is how to define the evolution of sets. Um, and, and note that I'm, I'm talking about a set of initial conditions, so I'm not talking about individual solutions. And this is a kind of statistical approach that, uh, so uh, we, we, we deal with an ensemble of solutions rather than individual solutions. And this is a very uh, natural uh, approach in the context of turbulent flows because uh, solutions evolve, they, 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 they have an unpredictable behavior in time. So what, what are you going to do to see some pattern in your analysis? You have a, a, number, a lot of experiments. And in each experiment, your quantities vary very erratically. So uh, what do you do? You take the ensemble average um, between the ex your experiments. This is the natural thing to do. And, and Luckily, your measured quantities um, with respect to this ensemble average is they display a more regular behavior. And the statistical solutions are made to formalize the concept, uh, the concept of ensemble average. So how do you uh, define the evolution of measures? Well, if your problem is well posed, you, then you have an, a, a well-defined associated semi-group, say S of T. And then you can easily define your measure mu of t as the transport of the measure mu naught by the, the, by the operator S of t. So and it, after a certain time t, if you want to measure, uh, if you want to know the measure of a certain set E, this is simply uh, the, the measure mu naught of the pre-image of the set E by the solution by the operator S of t. And the problem is when, when the initial value problem is not well posed, what do you do in this situation? Well, uh, with, for, for example, uh, the navier stokes equations, you don't, know how to, you don't know how to prove that they are well posed. So, uh, and Foyer and Prada in the early 70s, they defined a statistical solution as a family of measures mu of t uh, with t varying in time, satisfying this kind of Liouville type equation, which is like an evolution equation, but in a certain mean sense. So uh, you, you consider the integral uh, with respect to your, to your measures belonging to your family. So your statistical solution has to satisfy this, this Liouville type equation among, among other regularity conditions. So this, I'm sorry, this was, were statistical solutions in phase space, it's according to stress. And then they have and then Vishik and Fuskov in the late 70s, they defined a different type of statistical solutions which were defined on trajectory space. So this was, this was, this was a measure row carried by like a tube uh, like this. And then and this tube would be the carrier of your measure row uh, which contains almost all of your trajectories. And recently, Foyaj, Rosa, and Tamam, they have, they have given new definitions uh, inspired by the definition of Fischik and Fuskov. They define a Fischik Fuskov measure. Uh, and the, the advantage of their definition is that when you project a Fischik Fuskov measure, 
you obtain a family of measures, which is a statistical solution in phase space in the sense of Fourier and Froving. Uh, so it, it's like you're, ta you're taking the, uh, the tube, which is the carrier of your tra sorry, trajectory statistical solution, and then taking the slices of it, of it and then in each slice is the carrier of the probability distribution at that time. So what do you want to do? You want to extend these results, uh, which have been given to the Navier-Stokes equations, to a more general class of population equations. So what we have done until now was to def define statistical solutions in a general sense, statistical solutions in phase space and in trajectory space, and then to prove uh, the existence of solutions with, with for initial value problems with respect to these definitions with the, that we have given. And then in a second part, we consider, again, uh, uh, evolution equations w uh, for which we don't know to be well posed. Uh, and then we consider regularized approximations of these equations, and we we want to prove that the, the statistical solutions associated to the approximated problems converge to a statistical solution of the limit problem. So in our abstract setting, we consider the phase space X in the applications as simply a house of topological space and an interval I and the space of trajectories, which is a space of continuous functions from I with values in X, which is a house of space uh, with respect to the compact open topology. Then we have an operator which uh, associates to, to each trajectory from the space X calligraphic to its value on, the, on a time T. This is a projection operator. And here we have our, our abstract definitions of statistical solutions. So in, in trajectory space at first, we consider a set U, a subset of the, the, the trajectory space, which um, in the applications would be the set of solutions of your equation. So uh, consider a, set, a subset U, and consider, and then we say that a borrow probability measure rho on, on the trajectory space is a U trajectory statistical solution over I if first rho is tight, which is a, which is a kind of regularity condition for rho, and then if it's carried by a borrow set of the space of, of solutions, which is natural, natural because your, your, your measure has to be carried by, this, by the set of solutions. Uh, then we have statistical solutions in phase space. So we define this consider considering a normal space Y, uh, satisfying these inclusions. We have Y contained in, contained in X, and which is contained in y, in y prime. And then we say that a family of measures rho T is a statistical solution in phase space if first they satisfy this sort of continuity condition with respect to the time variable, uh, so the mapping which takes uh, t to, its, to the integral of phi with respect to rho of t is continuous on i for every bounded and continuous function on the, on the phase space. And second condition, uh, suppose you have a function f defined on i times y, taking values in y prime, such that this mapping is L1 in, with respect to i. This is natural in the context, all these conditions are natural uh, in the context of an application. Uh, second one, for example, would, would, be serious, would, be, would be verified via a priori estimates. And third, the most important one is the, the Liouville type equation. You, you require your family of measures to satisfy this, this kind of evolution equation in a mean sense. So a uh, statistical solution in phase space is simply a family of measures describing uh, the evolution of, of your sets of initial conditions, the, the evolution of your initial probability distribution, which would be something like that. And then, well, as, as the results for the Navier Stokes equations, we uh, we expect that for our abstract definitions to have what? To, uh, to, to have that every 
average trajectory statistical solution, when projected at, et at each time, would give you a statistical solution in phase space. And this uh, can be really proved, can be indeed proved in our case. But, and then finally we have the final, uh, finally we have the, the definition of a projected statistical solution, which would be uh, a family of measures, rho of t, which is projected from some trajectory statistical solution. Note that not, not every, st not every uh, statistical solution in phase space is projected. It's not guaranteed that this, this is projected from some trajectory solution. So what's the, the initial value problem in this case? So uh, now my interval i is going to start at some point t naught, and then I we have some hypothesis to be satisfied in order to obtain our uh, theorem on uh, of existence of statistical solutions. And so we suppose that our set U satisfy what you call hypothesis H, which contains the first condition is uh, simply a condition of existence of individual solutions. You, you have this uh, for every point here in the phase space, you have a point here uh, in the set of solutions which, uh, which starts at the, at the point that you have taken the, at the phase space. And the second one is simply a kind of preservation of compactness. If you start you with a set of initial conditions which is compact, then the set of solutions which have started at the set is also compact. We, we, we require this. And the other ones are simply, um, uh, in general, this, uh, well, we, we consider this uh, third condition to be satisfied by every set K and this subfamily of the family of our sets, which is a subfamily of the compact sets. And then our initial value problem is stated like this. We, Suppose you have a set U satisfying this hypothesis H, and suppose you are given a, pro a borrow probability type measure um, mu naught, and you want to find a U trajectory statistical solution rho such that the projection uh, of this measure at time T naught is equal to your initial measure. And the proof uh, is divided into two parts. In the first one, we suppose that our measure may not carry by a set K in the family K prime, which is a compact set. And since it's a compact set, we can, we can using crime minimum theorem, we can, apply, can approximate this measure may not by a convex combination of direct measures. So uh, it would be like we have here, I'm sorry, uh, our, our set of initial conditions. We, this, is the, this will be the support of your initial measure may not, and you are, you are considering these points here which approximate this measure may not. But since we are requiring that first condition, which is uh, a condition on the existence of individual solutions, uh, we, for each point here, we have a, a trajectory, so we can extend this, this measure in phase space to a family of measures in trajectory space, and then we use some compactness argument in the space of measures to obtain a limit measure rho, which is a trajectory statistical solution. The second case is, a, is obtained simply by decomposing your measure in naught into a fam into sum of measures which are carried by uh, sets in K prime, and, and you apply the previous case. So uh, we have this abstract definitions and in this abstract result that we have applied to some specific equations. The first one, the natural ones, the Navier-Stokes equations, and then we have also the Bannon problem, uh, uh, reaction diffusion uh, type equation, and also a nonlinear wave equation, but it can also be obtained for other equations. Uh, so this would be the second part of our convergence. We have an evolution equation of this form, and we consider a family of, of approximated problems. Uh, and, and here we would have a solution operator, and in order to obtain a convergence results in, in this abstract setting, you would need to, uh, you, you would need another, another set of, of hypotheses. Uh, 
the first one you ask this uh, this uh, as n to be continuous, which is natural because it's a solution operator of, uh, of a well-posed problem. Second one is convergence of initial conditions. Uh, the third one is similar to the, to the previous one, but here we have this condition uh, which requires for each k in this family k prime, you require that the evolution by the solution operator as, and also, I'm sorry, the, the family of solutions which started at k is contained in a set k of the trajectory space, which is a compact set. And this compact set is valid for all n. And the fourth one is simply a condition which in the applications should uh, can, need to be uh, obtained via uh, a result on individual solutions. You must have convergence of individual solutions in order to obtain a result for statistical solutions. So it's that. Thank you. Um,